the son, the daughter, and the sword. Today's topic is about who was actually Jack of Blades. Was he a hero or a villain? Jack of Blade is a character in the game Fable. If any of you are unfamiliar with Fable, Fable is a fantasy RPG game released in 2004 for the original Xbox and the PC. It was a game that promised a lot of things. But that's a topic for another video. It's a game that I actually beat 11 or 12 times and I don't know how but I'm always wander back to it sometimes. It's pretty light hearted game with a cartoon look to it. And that's where Jack of Blade comes in. And it gives the game a special edge with his distinct aura. So sit back, you can play this video also in the background. And let me tell you the story of his origin. But not only that, but I also explain how he was actually. Because there is a good amount of stuff to talk about him. As you can expect, this video will contain heavy spoilers for the game. So be warned. But... I guess you already expect that, so get comfy and enjoy this video. Fable didn't tell us many stories about the origin of Jack of Blades, and that leaves a mist of curiosity about who was he. Was he simply a villain trying to overtake Albion, or there is something more to it? And why does Jack of Blades possess two more separate masks on him? Many years ago there was a side now long dead created by Lionhead Studio. And it was there to fulfill you on the story what happened before Fable, better to know as Tales of Albion. The story starts how Albion was a peaceful land with many things to see and enjoy, but there were three characters that would cause many chaos and destruction in the land of Albion. They called themselves the court. The three characters came from an unexplained void. Some speculate it's another world, but they call it just simply the void. The three characters were the Queen of Blades, the Knight of Blades, and you guessed it, the star of today's video, Jack of Blades. The vicious trio had a simple plan. They wanted to rule Albion at any cost. The folk of Albion didn't take that lightly, and they gave resistance to the three self-proclaimed rulers. But their out-of-worldly power destroyed everything in their path turning the sky into a gaze of smoke and fire and the earth covered in black ashes. But the folk of Albion still didn't bend the knee. Then the trio raised the sea into the sky and dropped it on the landscape to try to drown the poor folk. But once again, were not willing to bend the knee to such lords. But the evil trio had a last trick upon their sleeve. They infiltrated the minds of the folk. As they started the fight and realized it was a fight against brother and a brother, they finally gave up and let them rule, so they can end the horrible slaughter. But the land of Albion raised a hero to fight the evil trio. A simple man named William Black, a son of a blacksmith. As William did grow up, he noticed some special things he can do with his mind and body, things of magical nature. And that's for you who didn't know, where the name originates from. People named the acts of magic acts of will and they were written in the magical books of Albion and also used in the game to describe as willpower. Not only William, a master of magic arts, was utterly upset and hellbent to free Albion from their evil, one night as usually William dived into his magical books to improve his abilities. He got snatched and dragged into a dark void. After looking around the dark abyss, he would finally see who dragged him in. None under the Jack of Blades. Jack possessed a special sword with magical powers. He wanted to end the life of William, but to his surprise, William did something unexpected. And with his magical powers, snatched the sword from Jack and was teleported back to Albion. Suddenly, the magic sword by the name Sword of Arion started talking to William and revealing if he gives his soul to the sword, the magical sword will help to kill the evil trio. William took the sword, climbed the biggest mountain of Albion to face the Knight of Blades. William didn't even struggle with him, as the sword of Eos guided his hand. The second was none other than Jack of Blades. William and Jack had a hard and a exhausting fight, but William succeeded to land a mortal blow to Jack and utterly destroy his body. But then suddenly the soul of Jack succeeds to escape into the void. Because Jack's body is just a shell, his soul rests within his mask. 
the mask is where his soul and mind are. We will talk about that later in the video. Then William faced the last battle. A battle so epic it fought for weeks. But William killed the Queen of Blades and freed the land. That's enough of William. But this was crucial to understanding the origin of Jack of Blades. The land was finally at peace and the legacy of William sprouted a whole bloodline of heroes which gave Jack of Blades many sleepless nights should he stage his comeback. And that leads Jack of Blades to you, the hero. An ascendant of the bloodline of the heroes. Thousand years later, Jack is once again back. So you are trained to fight Jack of Blades even if you're not knowing that. So he can't set a foot in Albion ever again. A small thing I wanna mention is that you probably saw that I'm using not the original voice of Jack from the fable, but rather the fable of the lost chapters. Many favor the original, but as I grew up on the fable, the lost chapters is just what I'm used to, and in my opinion it's more ominous voice and not human-like, so it's a perfect fit for the mad villain who arrived from dark and explained void, isn't it? I have returned. After an eternity away from you all, Jack of Blades is back. So one of the first things comes to mind is how Jack is still alive, or at least how he retains a human form. That's probably where the magic mask comes into the starlight once again. The two other masks Jack is carrying around are believed to be of his fellow friends. Does he carry them out of sympathy or because they are giving him some special power isn't really explained, but we know that their souls rest in the mask. So Jack of Blades did use his mask probably of many heroes who tried to stop him in a spam over thousand years of history of Albion. The story of Favor revolves about Jack of Blades who wanted to kill you, so he can use your blood to unlock the blades of Eos once again. But Fable does something brilliant with the story. You see, Fable is a game of choice, where you can choose to be a good, nice helping guy or utterly evil. Now, Jack of Blades isn't shown at the beginning of the games. There are some glimpses here and there, but nothing too revealing. Because if the game showed us the crazy looking guy who possesses a hero's body to use them like a puppet, there could be a good chance we will choose the good path. But not knowing who Jack of Blade is at first made Fable choices were more interesting, let's say. If you played Fable, you know that your parents were killed by bandits as a kid. In that desperate and hopeless moment shows Maze. A trustworthy guy from the Heroes Guild, but he was just a simple puppet of Jack. Jack killed everyone around Mace and let him live, and showed him mercy, so Mace devotes his life to Jack as his follower. He was put on one job to lure you directly into claws of Jack. Now you start your journey to avenge your parents and find your lost sister. At one point of the game, you are visiting a very iconic location in Fable, and that's the arena. It's a place your morals were put to test. In the final battle, you will need to fight your childhood friend Whisper, and you can guess twice who announced the final battle, none other than the hero of heroes, Jack of Blades. Now, why is Jack the hero of the arena? Probably because the arena voids with 10,000 golds if you can win, and he was just probably putting his strength to test. Now you can decide to kill your former childhood friend and take the gold to live in glory and wealth, or just simply let her live and pat yourself on the back knowing that you are the good guy. Once the battle is done, Jack comes to you as you look into a familiar looking statue. In that moment we can see that Jack is a cold manipulator. He talks to you like you know him for ages and tells you the story of the statue who is basically your mother. How she was once a true hero but threw it all away for a family life. After some time you meet your sister who reveals she was captured by Jack and they tortured her and plucked her eyes out as a child. With every step we take in the game we see how Jack of Blades is pure evil. Your sister tells you that your mother is still alive and that Jack is kept her locked up, so 
you, the hero, go on a quest to rescue her. But to your surprise, Jack was already waiting for you and captured you. And he locked you up for a full year after you managed to escape. This is one of the points in the game that left a mark on me as a kid, because imagine being prison held and tortured, and knowing that your character is aging, growing a beard, getting scars, is something really dark just to think about it. And even now it gives me slightly the chills. As you escape, you see that you need to use certain things called focus sites to capture Jack of Blades. This information was revealed by us by the dying maze on his last breath after we confronted him about his betrayal. So once again the heroes buckles up to stop Jack from his plan. And that's also where the game shifts to a more dark team vibe. But to our surprise, we couldn't stop Jack from his plan to activate the major focus sites to restore the sword. And it's a great way to surprise the player. Jack once again captures your mother and sister and goes to the hero's guild where he brutally executes your mother upon entering the room and uses her soul to awaken the sword of Eos. But to fully awaken the power of the sword he needs you, your sister and your mother. And now starts the last battle. When you defeat Jack of Blades there is one more test upon you, the game isn't over. To kill your sister with the same sword that Jack killed your mother and become stronger than Jack ever imagined or just to cast the sword in the dark abyss where you originate from. In the Fable DLC, the last chapters, there is a certain demon door that unlocks a path leading to the true last battle of the game, where the puppet master takes the form of a fire-breathing dragon. After killing Jack in this form, you use the mask to seal his soul, so he can't escape once again, but suddenly the mask speaks to you. Will you use the mask and making you feel like Frodo from Lord of the Rings? The choice is yours. So let's wrap up this video about Jack. Jack was not a too complex character, he definitely has some evil tendencies, especially if you don't know his backstory, which is not included in the game. He's definitely evil and desperate to rule over Albion. But then again in game you see there were monuments made for him. He was the hero of the arena and there were also built certain dolls that looked like him for kids. The plans he made were to good extent successful but in the end the hero did win. At least if you choose the good path where is it obvious you will free the land of him. But if you take the dark path it's a perfect story to become the most dangerous man in Albion. After defeating him and taking his mask and sacrificing your sister's souls to use the sword of Eos. Jack of Blades, I think it's a perfect fit for a game like Fable. Fable is dark sometimes, but I wouldn't describe the game as dark and disturbing. So with Jack of Blades, the game has a perfect balance in the story. A classic hero story of trying to save the world or the total opposite. Fable is a game I will revisit with some videos in the future again, as it really is close to my heart. I'm really thanking you for watching this video. If you want to see more videos like this, Write your favorite good or bad guy in the comment section and I will make it happen. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe and I see you in the next one. Bye.